finally, after the kinematic relations out of the way, we can also define the constitutive equations. These relations uh, define the behavior with which the strains and their conjugate stresses are related. For the Green-Lagrange and the second Piola-Kirchhoff uh, st uh, strain and stress, the relation can be written as Si is equal to Si at time at the reference plus the stiffness or the material properties with the strains. Uh, in a matrix notation, I can easily write this in terms that you are more familiar with is the stresses plus the initial stresses with the material uh, matrix and the strains. So this is the condition that we commonly use. Of course, instead of using the, word, the term sigma for stresses that we generally use, we use S because these actually relate to the Cauchy stresses, which are not used directly in the, uh, with the uh, Green-Lagrange uh, strains for the nonlinear analysis. So now since uh, the constitutive relations have been defined, uh, we will go on, by, uh, go on further for defining the finite element uh, um, equilibrium uh, problem. We will set up the formulation uh, by first defining the strain energy and uh, moving on further on how to set up the final equilibrium equation. In order to define the equilibrium equations for the finite element formulation for an element, after having defined these constitutive relations and kinematic relations giving us the stresses and the strains that we require, we need to define something called the total potential energy, which you may recall from the linear modeling case. So the total potential energy, also written as TPE and usually used as a pi, can be given as the difference between the total strain energy in the system minus the work done or the external work done in the system. So the strain energy of the system, uh, as you may recall, is the energy stored in the system uh, as an internal stress and the work done, of course, is external forces. Now, the contribution of the work done is quite simple to explain, so I can write that uh, first and get away with it. So you have the work done, which is going to be given as the force, which is applied on the system times the displacement. And of course, you'd have to use a transpose because both of them are vectors to make it work. In our case, the force can be written as for nonlinear analysis as an increment of the uh, loads steps and given with u. So this is a standard formulation for the work done. Uh, this is written in a vector format. If you remember from the nonlinear from the linear modeling case, we most of the times use something like FIUI, which gives us a summation for all the different nodes. It can also be written in a vector format. Now coming to the better uh, or more describable uh, part, which is the strain energy. The strain energy of the system given as U can be uh, written as uh, an integral of the stress in the system times the incremental strain where the strain goes from the reference coordinate or the base uh, configuration given with the epsilon naught to the uh, current configuration given as epsilon. Of course, this epsilon naught refers to the strain at the reference configuration and epsilon refers to the strain and the current configuration. So we can uh, write this as the strain, of course, from uh, stress comes from uh, this equation right here. And we can write this as S naught plus E epsilon times uh, epsilon after it has been integrated and you have to uh, have limits of epsilon not to epsilon. This can now therefore be written as epsilon times uh, S naught times epsilon minus epsilon naught plus E epsilon. This is of course epsilon squared by 2 because it had to be integrated for the epsilon naught. This is the epsilon, sorry, not E. So we can write it like this, minus epsilon naught square, uh, sorry, epsilon half e epsilon minus epsilon naught square. Now we know that in the current configuration here, epsilon naught is equal to zero. There's no strain in the system. Therefore, we can write the final expression as S naught epsilon plus half E epsilon squared. And in a, a vectorial format, we can write it as epsilon, S naught epsilon plus half of epsilon transpose E epsilon. 
this will be the final st uh, total pot strain energy in the system so reducing the work done you will get the total potential energy of the system uh, this when differentiated with respect to the nodal displacements and rotations will give us the final formulation for the finite element equilibrium equation now using all these concepts that have been discussed in these uh, uh, videos we will now uh, go ahead and set up the finite element formulation for a simple bar or a truss element which is placed in a 2d plane 